and we're live with episode six of the Waiting Room podcast. I'm your host Derek Rush, along with Brendan the Cruise. Our two other guests, sh- our two other hosts, should be here shortly. It's Brendan's fault if they're not. And we'd like <laughs> we would like to thank Priya from Hits uh, Radio Station for joining us tonight. Thank you very much, Priya, for joining us, and welcome to the Waiting Room podcast. Thanks for having me. It's our pleasure. Yeah. So uh, generally, the, the general format is that our guest, we start off um, asking the guest your journey and into music, how you got into radio or where you are now. So like, like you, t- did you take over and where was your journey come from? How did you get into all okay. this? Okay, so it's interesting. Um, I actually studied psychology. I never knew I was going to get into radio or, or this industry at all. Uh, I was actually... Uh, one of those uh, on-ground crew where you drive a car and you give out freebies for the radio station. I did it as a part-time job. A promotion? Um, promotions team, yeah. on-ground team. The cruisers. Uh, the cruisers. The cruisers. You know, I thought it was in Red. So Red was uh, Red Riders, by the way. So Red Riders. Oh. Uh, I did it a uh, part-time gig lah, because I was working um, at Red and then I was also studying. So it was just something to do on the side. Um, and then... I think I did it for a year and then somebody said, hey, do you want to be on air? So I was a read, I was an announcer for a bit. Um, oh. And then it just, it just kind of, I don't know why, like I, I didn't realize I was going to stay in the industry for so long because from driving a car to being a part-time radio announcer on the weekends and then suddenly somebody said, hey, do you want to be, try out and be a breakfast producer? And I was doing all of this while still studying. So oh. it was fine because I could do my, my classes, uh, in the afternoons, I did the yeah. breakfast show in the morning with JJ. So I would leave probably about twelve, and then do the two or three o'clock classes. And university and university then, classes per week. What was about eight or t- eight or between eight and twelve hours a week class wise? You're only helping yeah. It was it, it was about that, and I just yeah. picked the electives that were in the afternoon, or I could do online classes, or the really easy ones. Because I, oh, I think at where, that point I was we, like, where were you doing psychology? I did help and help. Oh, my wife just my wife's a. Uh, uh, she's a PhD in cognitive psychology. She used to be a oh. lecturer. She used to be a lecturer in help in cognitive psychology. Dude, this, she might be my lecturer. That well, might this be is, it. This was yeah. about uh, seven what, who's years your ago. What's your lecturer's name? I cannot remember. So many lecturers. La. How do you well, <laughs> figure out that? It's about seven years ago. Her boss was Kenneth at the time, who, who unfortunately yeah, passed away. That, that would have been around the same time, yeah, yeah, well, I guess. Because yeah. uh, I was there in 2011 or 12, I think. 12, she, she, yeah, she, well, she would she would have been there. She would have been there for a year and a half between 2011 and 2013, 2014. Yeah. So, she probably... so I took a while to to graduate actually because I was only doing afternoon classes. So okay. I would kind of just go in, do a class, and then bounce well, she, class. Have you, have you done cognitive psychology? She probably taught you at, at one stage. Oh, maybe. Uh, uh, yeah, so. and then yeah. So anyway, then I was a breakfast producer, and then. Um, I always wanted to schedule music. I thought that was the coolest thing, right? You get to dictate a playlist and like uh, pick a song, you know, and somebody will be driving in the car and be like, oh my God, I haven't heard this song in a while. So that was always my dream. Uh, so when there was an opening, I say, hey, you know, guys, I want to try this out. And I got it. So I was a music uh, music exec, that's what they call us, um, for, for a few years. And then, um, and then Red shut down. So... When when Red shut down, they let everyone go, but they had to keep someone uh, around to still schedule music because we, I mean the license needs to continue and the the there needs to be music on the station. So they kept okay. me, and I was scheduling for Red and Capital uh, okay. for, for a while. I think I did uh, about eight months, I guess. Um, and then in that time, because I was the only staff there, they just gave me a room, and I was the only one sitting down there. I'll come in the morning, schedule my music, and I'll leave. That must have been um, very strange. Oh, uh, it was the, it was so boring. <laughs> like, like nobody talked to. So you just and let me get the straight. You just put a playlist on and then left and let the music just. Yeah, because th- that's pretty much all I had to do. Yeah, like that's a cool job. You, no, it's not. After a while, it's great. <laughs> no, but <laughs> after a while, after a while, when you have no one to talk to and like there's no content, it was great because I had no stuff and it was just me but I could play around with the playlist so okay. today I said oh today I feel like maybe doing a throwback day and like, nobody's there so I had no boss right so I just made like, made up like new playlists or like a different theme uh, so that was fun for a while but there's only so much you can do after a while you'll be like okay I think it's time to find a job before um, I go bored or they, they get rid of me completely yeah. so and then I got uh, hired by 
uh, Warner, Warner Music. So I was with Warner. I did. I went to the other side of things. Um, I was the marketing and promotions executive uh, for international artists. Okay. So I had to work on like Ed Sheeran's album, Bruno Mars, uh, those names lah. Um, so I did that for a while, for about a year and a half, and then I think I was I was kind of done with uh, with the label life, and and actually, actually I was done. I was gonna you know figure out what's my next step. You know, I was like, maybe I'll go back into psychology and, and figure out what to do. Um, and then I went on like a final buy, goodbye tour to Astro because that was one of my clients, right? To service from the label yeah. side, I had to go <laughs> to, to the radio station. So I said bye to them. And then they were like, oh, where are you going? I said, no idea, man. I was probably going to drive Uber or something for a while. And then uh, then they were like, uh, we, we need someone urgently. Can you start on Monday? So I was like, wow. Uh, okay. So I was like, and this is like a Friday, right? And I was like, sure. So it was a three month contract because they just needed help during their, their survey period. Um, and it's been three years and I'm, I'm there. I'm still there. So um, that I guess is my journey. So because when I joined uh, Astro, I was in hits under as a music exec again, yeah. um, just to help them schedule music and stuff. And then about a year later, um, I became their content manager. So I'm the content manager of the station. Um, as of March this year, I am now the head of English Networks. So I run Hits, Mix and Light. Okay. Oh, yeah. Nice. Okay, cool. cool. Yeah. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, so I'm still in the industry. <laughs> I guess it's time to get, get in the nutty gritty. And the, and the oh, before, really we here for... <laughs> before we get into the gritty gritty, uh, mm. Fabian, say hello to everybody. Oh, okay. Hey, Fabian, Fabian, how are you? Hey. Priya, right? Have you all met? Yes. We all know each other? No, we've... I no. don't think we've met, right? I don't know. I can't remember. I don't think so. Wait, are you... I never go out. Nah. I really just don't go out. I'm at work or I'm home. That's it. Okay. Well, you're in bed for your o'clock, so you're definitely not going out to see you. Yeah. Right? <laughs> all right. So you find all me right. on the weekends. Friday nights, I'm out. Friday nights, you can find me in the pubs or wherever. But Monday to Thursday, no lah. I, I sleep at 8 o'clock. <laughs> wow. <laughs> very, very disciplined. Eight very, o'clock. Very disciplined. Like we're very lucky today, hey. Fabian. We're very, very lucky. Yeah, we're very lucky. <laughs> Way past. I haven't even had dinner yet. Uh, well, I'd like to apologize. <laughs> what? To, I'd like to apologize to any previous staff. Tomorrow she's grumpy. Like it's definitely our fault. <laughs> it's fine. Guy. It's a Friday. Friday blame we the, get to leave early, and I'll probably walk for a drink. <laughs> that's, no, that's no stereotype at all. And in, in the England Red for a drink at the weekend, there's nothing stereotypical about that at all. <laughs> Hey, you're practically that. Indian. No, you're <laughs> no, you're, you're, you're practically Irish. We are practically it's Irish. All our, it's all way about. No, you're practically or we're all practically the same. <laughs> anyway, so... Um, hey, hey, Fabian, so... Carlsberg. Yeah. So, um... 100 plus, la, bro. 100%. Hey, 100 plus. La. Look like Carlsberg, guys. It's that's, that's so simply, la. Hey. <laughs> that's probably worse for you than Carlsberg, to be honest, like, so... Anyway, and no, there's no product marketing going on here, guys. This is this is there's yeah, no royalties at all. Like branding, huh? We're, we're like the Never BBC. Know, right? We can't. There's no product placement allowed. Anyway, uh, so uh, Hits of Emin have decided to start promoting local English uh, uh, English speaking musicians and, and artists. So local English, English music. English, English music. music. Yeah. So I guess uh, uh. I guess the the first question should be like. What was the what was the procedure before? Because obviously there was a hoo ha that happened prior a few weeks ago with some certain artists complaining yeah. that they weren't getting played, saying that they had to go through some sor sort of thing. So yeah. can you explain to us the procedure of a local musician who just like Fabian or Brendan they release they release an EP sent in the hits FM prior this is prior to the new your new yeah. uh, announcement. Prior to that, what would have been the procedure for a local artist to get played on FTFM? So usually it would be if somebody's got a song, they just email it over. And if it's a, if it's a song that, you know, it, it's kind of good and stuff like that, usually the only spot is Met 10. It's always been the case. Um, it's it's, this is a, uh, it's uh, always Met been 10. the case where it goes on the Met 10. So it's the Malaysian English Top 10. Okay. Now, this is, I guess, a system that's been around since the start of the yeah. station in 97. Um, and if if it's good enough, because we, we do still put this for testing, um, and if it and if the listeners do like it and they vote for it, 
then it goes on a main rotation. So now Met Fan only happens one hour on a Sunday. So it's okay. on a weekend, you get one hour of just <clears throat> full uh, full hour of local music. Okay. Um, but it's not mixed with the international tracks and, and stuff like that. We're predominantly a top 40 station. So yeah. that's how it's always been. It's always been, if you've got a song, it goes on Met 10. Okay. Um, and it'll, it'll, and it, will, it will only get played on it if you just put it out on a, a kind of like like a testing thing where audience yeah. will vote yes will vote for this yeah. one and was it tested thing online or prior it is it... it's actually still online so oh, um, <coughs> to, to talk about this testing everybody thinks it's fake right so everybody says oh yeah you think it's it's just an excuse that people give to, to say because oh, I, I was asking when I heard about this I asked so many people what is this testing thing and I, yeah. didn't, I didn't get a straight answer from anybody no one can give me an answer it was almost like Bigfoot. It was almost like this <laughs> mythical thing, and no, that the, oh, someone someone had heard something about it or seen something about it or knew yeah. someone who went through it, but no one could give me a straight answer what it yeah. was. And I was like, going, okay, I can't I can't talk about something unless I know what I'm talking about. What is this thing? Oh, we we, we don't really know. <laughs> no, that's no. So that's the thing, though. That's the that's the weirdest thing because I know a lot of people um have have issues with this testing and and they will say, oh, what is this testing? You know, I've never heard of it and all that. And I'm like. You know what? No one has ever asked me what is the testing and what 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 entails a yeah. testing system, right? So I'm gonna tell you now that if you go to our website or if you go to any of our socials now, every day we will post something saying, "Please rate our hits on our VIP club." Okay. It's a standard thing. We actually even give you a prize. So if you vote for it, uh, like every two weeks we change. We, like the current one, I think we're giving away 500 ringgit worth of sports vouchers or something like that, right? So every two weeks, we change the prize up. You vote for it. All we do is we put hooks of songs on on this on this site, and it's like a survey monkey sort of thing. Yeah. It's an airtime survey, lah. And um and you vote for it. If you like the song, it'll tell us whether you hate it, you love it. Um, then it gives us a sort of like a percentage percentage of how much you like it and stuff like that. And that kind of helps us with our rotation. Like, hey, you know, if you love it so much, maybe we can play it more. Uh, if you don't like it as much, maybe we won't play it as much. That's okay. it. And this is a standard testing that has always been around. All right. um, and you do, for, only... you do this for everything, including the top 40 stuff, or the top 40 stuff is just based on whatever the top 40 Malaysia is at the, at the time? It's not only Malaysia, so we check uh, the international charts also. Okay. Um, I Now I oh. even check what's happening online, like the streaming stuff, even like rim charts, because now rim charts also kind of collect uh, the top of 20 songs of the week, local and international. So we use all this um, as just sort of like backing data for us uh, to just kind of see what people want because listeners also get to text us saying, hey, can you really play this song? Can you play, uh, you know, Justin Bieber's new track or something like that? And as much as they say we are overplaying the songs, they really do request it all the time. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's at the end of the day, they control the playlist. So the, the public, I the guess pub last time... The public is always going to control the play playlist unless, yeah. unless right. it's real, yeah. unless, unless it's... The Soviet Union, the public are always going to control the, the, <laughs> yeah, the players. Correct, like, yeah. So, um, so I, I guess I, I, one question would be, how does how did the, the how did the artists, the local artists, get past the initial hurdle once they send it in? Do who decides this is good enough to put on to the the Met test and list? Yeah. So the the we don't really get a lot of songs coming in all the time really um, oh really yeah i actually don't get a lot of local wow. tracks coming on in all on, the time so on, on average on average a week what, what, what would you say i i'm i would say in two weeks i probably get maybe two songs are you serious like, i really don't that's get songs like crazy. So that's crazy i only and i always get from this from the same bunch of people right like hey i've got a song coming out and like but i don't actually get songs on a weekly <sighs> i I have nothing coming in to me. Man, like, I thought I pick... it would have been in like yeah, hundreds like... or something. No, there are yeah. no songs coming in. <laughs> oh my god. What? That's and, my and brain. It's a it was a country, there's a country of 33 million people where loads of musicians constantly create content wow. creating. Like... That is great You would think so, right? So that should, you should be, a, you should be inundated. Like, with, it, it should be, a, you should be complaining going like, we don't get enough music from local musicians. Can you please send hmm. some stuff? It should be the other That's way, why right? I guess I, I'm I'm on a mission now. I guess to to speak more in public because I actually don't 
So I've always been, the past three years, a lot of people don't even know I work there because, yeah. uh, or that I'm in charge because I actually don't go out. Like I, I do my work and, and I leave, right? So I, I'm not out in the industry much. So now lately I've been saying, you know what? I, there are questions that I need to answer and there are things that I need to fix. And this is one of it. It's like a lot of people think I get songs all the time. I don't. I get from the same uh, bunch of musicians again and again. And a lot of them even message me and say, hey, I got a new song coming out. I'm like, okay, great. When is it? Is it coming out this week or next week? Uh, maybe in two months. I'm like, bro, don't tell me this now. Can you tell me like a week before or two weeks before so, your, yeah. your release? So, so mm. you, the, the songs that you're talking about, right? So this testing mm. is... Yeah. So basically, you have to go through this test first and then get onto the mat then. So these no, people no, that no. you're talking we, about... We put on the Mat 10 first because we don't have enough songs. So everybody okay. gets on the Mat 10. Unless, yeah, it's, everybody gets on the unless, it's, unless it's really, really bad quality. Yeah, because yeah. a lot of them actually don't send good quality ones. So like, some of them maybe even, do, if you put it on like radio... They don't like, master or something. They don't master like, it. So, like a good Mexican that's not mastered can get played. Like, okay. you would need to be talking about... Really, oh, there's well, no like a master requirement for radio. Radio does there its own sort of master. Well, yeah, we have our own master, master, but we kind of yeah, edit yeah. our own, yeah. Yeah, yeah, radio. Oh, radio, okay. Like, you're, when you go through radio, you're going through uh, some sort of master and compression anyway, so it, it will bring the levels up to a certain, a certain <coughs> level. But, if yeah. it's, it, but I can understand if it's really, really bad. Because as a gig promoter yeah. myself, I used to, bands used to sell me, send me their CDs, and, like, there's some. Yeah. And usually I like to put on any band. I used to like to put on any band, but there's some that were so, so bad. Like, there, you had to just have to yeah. say, listen, guys, you're just not there yet, but... It's you, shock. It's, I'm still, I'm still a wee bit in shock that the two artists a week and it's, it's just repetitive. No, that's two. No, no, no. It's two songs. Two songs. Yeah, that's. Have you ever had some of them? Some of them even send like, like the, the half, copy, of me, right? half of me. Half of me. Half of me was here to fight the good fight for Malaysia. <laughs> the Malaysian music scene. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, there's no fight. There's, there's nobody they fight no for. Fight. <laughs> there's nothing. That's. A, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, like you, you like, there's all these controversy and stuff like that and saying like, oh, you're not supporting. I'm like, there's no music coming. And then some of them send a song and say, hey, can you please play my song? And I'm like, I listen to it. And I'm like, look, it's not great. Like, I can't, the, the mixing is not great. Like, you know, it's suddenly like a dip in, in audio yeah, and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And then some of them will come and say, oh, I quit my job. I, I've spent 20,000 on this track. You know, it's my life dream to be on radio. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, I really can't help you though. And then, then they're like, oh, what do you know? You just work in radio. And I'm like, okay, I really don't know how to help this situation here. Um, so, yeah. I think I probably, like there's something, one of the major issues is something I've been, I've been sort of really, that's really annoyed me for a long time with local artists. It's like, it's the, it's the local artists doing covers all the time and putting yeah. on YouTube and where they could be spend time writing their own song and they've yeah. always obviously they've they've got a port of call where they can go to and get it played on the radio yeah they're, they're spending their time doing cover song after cover song after this, oh, i'm dropping my new cover song t today i'm dropping my new cover song today and you're, you're like yeah. i'm screaming at the clouds like an old man going <laughs> like write a song stop doing cover songs please write some you're a talented artist please write your own music you're not going to get they're picking cover songs that are currently on on air also so for example if somebody's going to sing a, a justin bieber song and i'm like look i've already i'm playing justin's version so and then do, i'm going to play your version and people, it's going to be messy do people actually people send you their versions of cover songs yeah yeah we do get cover songs oh my god like what is their purpose for that they're sending it to you to play on regular rotation i have no idea that's nobody it. tells me right what they no. want they're just like hey i've got a song they wouldn't even okay, have, great. It wouldn't and legal. Is, they the wouldn't even have done legal. A cover song. <laughs> yeah. Legally, you couldn't even play that. Fantastic, man. Legally, you couldn't even play that on the radio because it's this, like no, this we episode, can't. This episode is going to be the first episode that we're going to put sponsored ad for. Like, come on, <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah. Too, like. yeah, yeah. Let's just, all just put <laughs> fifty ringgit yeah. in this, like, please. So remember earlier, Derek was asking about the Mat Ten, and you were saying prior to this uh, new announcement that it just mm. made. Uh, so the only platform that, that, that local musicians had was uh, the Mat 10, right? Yeah. Now you're saying that for the longest time, the Mat 10 was the only um, uh, show for local music, uh, local English music. 
because we are not i mean you guys are not getting enough uh, entries we were not getting a lot um so then i think re- like recently like we've been getting like like, like for example like alex dbh and your mfms and stuff like that they've been actively producing well i only can speak for the past 3 years lah because i've been around for the past 3 years i'm not okay. too sure about the the previous uh, managers before me but the past 3 years we've been getting uh quite a bit coming in from certain uh, musicians right and those ones we were like okay you know what we're going to give you an interview and we'll put it we'll do the testing and we'll put it outside of met tech we've actually been playing local music for the past year except that we haven't been we didn't announce it we didn't make a big announcement saying yeah. hey we're playing local music we we've, we've been constant, consistently playing actually on main rotation okay but cool. now it's like hey we are like we're pushing a bit more and we're also making a big deal out of it because okay, so- No, go ahead, yeah. go ahead. No, I'm just saying, yeah, because down the line it was, if and be, with the whole drama that you were talking about a few weeks ago, that song was on air. That yeah, song was, was on air, not just on Met Ten. It was not oh, only just yes, on Met Ten. Yes, because okay. we were we were playing those the, the songs, and there were songs other than that song. There were few other local tracks that were on. Yeah. And that's why it came as a shock to me. So what? Um, what? What was the drama for them? I have no idea. So you think the person was I just saying things to, to stir up his own kind of publicity, like? I think, the, yeah, he probably wanted a bit more fake exposure. News? That could be no. I think he just probably wanted more, um, you know, like more, like maybe an interview or something like that. Because oh, okay. that could have oh. been. I don't know, but um, I mean, I I had a chat after uh, a few okay. days after, and it was okay. So like even like the first thing I I mentioned was. The, the song was on air and and you knew it so i was a bit confused with that um but did he also admit, i said that that he admit this that it would that yeah. the user played it on air yeah he had nowhere to go then i cannot that's very strange he had nowhere to go once he once he admit that you played it because his whole case was you just weren't playing his song that was yeah. the whole drama <laughs> that's why i, I yes, didn't want to respond to anything yeah The post said that it wasn't played, but you and I had post. seen it on the chat, lah. It was on the chat for a while. There was, there was, it was, new, it was, it was on the it chat. Was, it was number it was three. It was in newspapers. It was in newspapers yeah. that the like that he was like he was rallying for Malaysian music. <laughs> like there yes, was in sir. Yeah. I seen newspaper. Odd fellow. Yeah. And That's also, I think, I think when when I when I when I when I guess when the whole uh, messages and all that were coming in, the post and all that were coming in, I felt. Oh man, because we've been, we actually wanted to launch this campaign at the start of this year. Yeah, this was supposed to come out in March. And, and then COVID ha- happened. And then COVID happened, mm-hmm. and then we were like, we didn't even know what we were doing because we were doing our shows from home, and like yeah. to just arrange everything was just all over the place. So when we finally got back to the office, and we're like, okay, look, I don't want this to just be a one-off thing where we just launch it, and then there is no. Kind of a proper plan, um, and then look, and then it's just going to be like, like the same thing, lah. Like it's how it's always been before this, right? They play it for yeah. a while and then they pull away. And then you play again for a while and then you pull away. Now this, if I were to leave tomorrow, and this is going to continue, yeah, because now systems are in place, right? Um, and and so when when the whole thing blew up, and I was like, man, we're two weeks away from the launch. Now it's just going to look like. I'm giving in to something. I'm not, you know. Yeah. This has always been the plan, you know. Yeah. So that was a bit of a bummer, I guess. Uh, when when this thing, whole thing blew up, lah. Also, it's going to make yeah. it's going to, it's going to sort of look like <coughs> that you're firefighting. The, this the new announcement, the sort of firefighting uh, campaign. They sort of save face after his hoo ha. I think so, but I think also down the line, I really didn't want it to be a. a a tactic or or sort of like a, a putting out a fire or something like but, that. I'm. I Is genuinely it, wanted to do this for the industry. At the end of the day, if it works out as a good thing, who cares? Yeah. yeah so like exactly. So like at the end of the day, the main goal is to get Malaysian music on on radio on on main rotation. It's it's all our songs that we have now, and the the we've been what four or five days. Today somebody was telling me, hey, I heard a Malaysian song in a mama. I heard hits in a mama, right. and I was actually listening to a local track, and that song is damn good. So why don't you? And tell I was us like, okay, that's great. That. Why don't you tell us the 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 new format and what's the, what's this new format until how many days a week? So the so the whole the, it's twenty four seven essentially. It's on your main rotation. So okay. it's basically 
in between international tracks, we've also got local tracks. Yeah. Um, throughout an hour, and and it's every hour. Met Ten is still around. That's still the chart, and it's still one full hour of local music. That's still um, good. That's still good. Um, and yeah, so that's it. Basically, now when you're driving and listening to the radio, you could hear an international track. You could hear a local track. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what great. the way? Yeah, and the way that the reason why I and I was telling my announcers this. I said I don't want you to say, oh, that's a Malaysian singer, or that's a this is an international track. No, it's not. A hit is a hit. We play the hits, right? So yeah. if we put it on, we know it's good enough, and there is value. And yeah. And you, it's, you it's, can it's, fight. These international tracks are as good as the no the local the lo- tracks. The, no, the local tracks are the local good. tracks are as, 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 as good, good as the international the tracks. tracks. Yeah. yeah. So what is going to be the 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 the, the, the standard? Yeah. What's going to be like the benchmark? Like, so, you know, like Derek said earlier, you know, we've got tons of Malaysian musicians who are who are creating their own uh, content. Apparently but, not. Apparently not. I'm going to start scolding anybody. Since the day of the launch on the 1st of August and we released that, uh, the, the, the new website and stuff like that, I have just gotten 10 songs in the past 4 days. Good. So, oh, nice. Good. So good. I'm like, where have you guys been all this while? That's really just been the main thing, right? And I'm yeah. like, some of them have been sending like, uh, raw demos because that's something that we've launched also, which... I'll get into it after that, lah. So, but it's okay. it's cool because actually there, there there are songs out there, but just nobody's sending, or maybe they just didn't know where, or yeah. were afraid to, or like you know. Yeah. But still, you guys are going to decide what makes a hit. So I want to know by what definition are you guys so, going by? You so know? this is where this is what what we we've launched uh, also. We've started a Malaysian music panel. So to pick the songs that go on rotation is going to be a. Uh, unbiased, independent panel comprising of people from the industry. So it can be a musician, it can be a singer-songwriter, it can be a sound engineer, it can be anyone, even event promoters and stuff like that. Now, this panel uh, rotates. So it's not going to be the same people every oh, month. Rotates? Um, cool. Sorry? Oh, nice. ro- rotates? Sorry? Yeah, rotates? Yeah, it rotates. Yeah. Yeah, so it rotates. That's um, a wee, that's a wee bit better because the initial thing we were thinking like, what's this going to be? Some sort of X Factor panel? They they get yeah, to be, nah, yeah. Yeah. They get to be the arbiter. And the thing is, even when the good. songs, right, when when I send the songs over to to the panel, right, they're not gonna get the name of the singer. They're not gonna get the title of the track. They're gonna get a song. Now, oh, cool. because I don't want this biasness of oh, that's my friend, that's my. Oh, I'm not a huge fan of this fella. Not none of that. I'm we're judging you based on that song. Good. That's a good. That's that's a, cool. I, I like that concept. Yeah. That's a nice. good concept. That's yeah. a good concept. Yeah. Yeah. That's, so that, whatever songs that come in good, in, a, that, in a two week frame. I think that's too good. Uh, Certainly, the issues that I had in my own head with this panel once I heard about it, I think you've dissuaded those and pacified yeah. those two issues. Number one, that it's going to be yeah. rotating. It, doesn't mean, it means you're not going to have one panel eventually holding all the power of what gets played. And two, they have no idea who the they artists don't know are. Who. Yeah. They don't so know there's who. always three what? people on they the panel. Know, they, don't know, um, they don't know what ethnicity the, the artists are. They, nah, the only thing nobody really knows is the genders. That's about it. Like, or, yeah, what, or, or what sort of genre the song is like. Genre, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. about that. That's good. No, yeah. that, that, that's so, pretty good. So, yeah, it will just be labeled by numbers. So, there's always three people on the panel. I'm the constant person there so that I can explain uh, how things work. And then yeah. the other two would be uh, changing. Uh? So, everybody gets probably two uh, two music changes. And then after that, we will change the panel again. Okay, um, cool. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. So, that, that kind of helps with uh, I guess picking the music so it's not like a friend or whatever and look this is this still uh, this way still applies to even the labels sending their local tracks so it doesn't mean just because you're with the label you get automatic play it yeah. still goes to this okay. panel and uh, the panel decides uh, okay. which track so there will be a, a sheet of paper and then they've got to rank lah, which is from their favorite to their least favorite and then okay. we will compile the thing together Okay. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, so nice. now, what, once these songs they go through, okay, let's just say for the first month you've got three panels, and yeah. then um, you get a bunch of songs, and these three people are going to select these songs. Now, when yeah. you guys switch your panel again, mm. now will those songs that were already selected continue to be in the playlist, or you know you guys are going to keep rotating your songs, and those songs are not going to be played anymore? No. And you're going to so have like a... it. It's still in the playlist. So it's still in the playlist until something else gets bumped up. 
Well, as long so as we will say, hey, you know, this. As long as the public probably keeps asking for the songs, the songs yeah. just keep yeah. getting played. Like so. Uh, uh, yeah, like, like I mean, at the end of the day, it's a frequency thing, right? So if you keep hearing a song all the time, and you're like, oh, this song stuck in my head, I, I really like it, and yeah. they keep requesting for it, and they keep yeah, voting for it. Play it. Yeah, you know, that's that's constantly just going to be around, but also we, I mean, we have day, a period the, of time. At the end of the day, the final arbiter is always going to be the public. They're always going to have, mm. always, they have to be the public. It has to be the public being the final arbiter of what gets played or not. But, so. yeah, and that's where it comes to our next point, which is we're, the, the, we're not just putting the songs on air, we're educating our listeners about the local talents. Yeah. So it's not just, here's a song, I don't really know who this person is, I'm just going to shazam it and see who this person is. You know, it's more than that. You want to, it's, it's like liking an international artist. It's the same thing. You, you, it's a fan base, right? You're trying to build a fandom and stuff like that. So we've come up with a few features um, on our digital spaces also. So we also give you on air, the, all the songs that uh, are playing, being played by local artists, you get interviews on air, you get um, a, a digital content feature that we're doing called Behind the Hit, where you explain who you are and um, also the meaning behind your hit and you know just tell us a story about yourself and we've also done um hit sessions which is a uh, acoustic uh set so you come you sing two of your songs and then we will release it on our our platforms and yeah so that's extra exposure and okay, we've cool. also launched um a malaysian music directory on our website um so if you click it's a, sort of like a microsite and you click there uh it's a directory of malaysian artists that uh you click on their name so that's you click a um and then it says Aaron or whatever. And then it's got your socials, your YouTube page, um, and a brief bio about yourself. So people get to discover wow. who you are cool. and just check your music out and all that. So it's a it's a growing uh, list. So we've been compiling. Uh, it's not 100% yet. And you always just, we'll just keep updating that. So if you've got new music or whatever, send it to us. We'll change the link to your YouTube, um, your, your current song or the song that you're trying to push. And yeah, so that's something else that we're doing like. Well, I think that's yeah. a good, a uh, good place. So sorry, no, sorry baby, I think that's a get... good place. Wait, wait, oh, wait, wait, okay, wait, wait, sorry, wait, wait, wait. I think it's a good place to end the first half of the show. Pray, are you happy enough to stay around until the second half at ten o'clock? Yeah, yeah, that's why. Okay, because our because Zoom only gives us a certain Bria. bit of time. Pray, I really appreciate. Yeah. So we'll we'll end the first half of the show here, and then the second half of the show we'll take it up with what uh, you're planning to do for the future. And what what you hope to achieve long term with, with uh, your things? Maybe you, I apologize for interrupting your question, but we'll get you back. Don't <laughs> forget that. your question. Maybe you yeah. write down the question, Fabian. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> and we're back for the second half of uh, the waiting room number six, and we've got Priya as our guest. And uh, joining us for the second half is Asmil, who was uh, selling his kids off there. I don't know what they were selling them off for. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, Asmil can tell us. <laughs> um, putting them to bed, that's all really. <laughs> sure. <Yeah. laughs> so in the first half, uh, Priya was uh, informing us about how, like, the new the new way that hits, hits, formerly Hits FM now hits um, is going to be... Uh, producing english uh, uh music mm. malaysian mm. english speaking music and the the prior the prior uh, method that they had and how little the shock and revelation was how little actually music that they were <laughs> receiving on a weekly or bi-weekly basis as well you didn't you weren't there uh. for a round they were receiving about two songs for every two weeks Really? Oh yeah, man, I should I know. Uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> that was the uh, sh- that was the shock and revelation that we got because we were thinking like, oh, they're just w- usual thing like our radio stations. They don't, they don't want to play local music. Uh, uh, they, they, there was no. They were they weren't getting local music to play. <laughs> we weren't. Everything I went see. on the Met Ten. <laughs> oh, serious? Huh? Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. All right. So I think we yeah. uh, we can uh, continue on now with uh, pre. How do you see the the future? Of what what what's the what's the maybe one year, three year, five year plan of what you what you're proposing? What you before? Plan plan? Okay, so before before we go into that, I've got a question for you guys actually. Okay, yeah, um, yeah. Boom. Yeah, boom. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Too much, ah, too no, much pressure for us. We, we, we're, we're musicians. We don't like pressure. <laughs> just gonna sneak attack, too. right? There was a sneak attack. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, because I mean, I mean, um, everybody keeps asking like, oh, what's radio doing? What's radio doing to, to support, you know? As a musician, what do you want radio to do for you? Um, Back from radio, yeah. Okay, I'm going to just speak first because I have put up 
something like that over the years because you hear things lah you know especially if you're new in the scene uh you don't really not everything you hear on a first hand basis is the truth it's usually a uh, exaggerated experience and you find it out along the way after you meet people who are actually in the, in the industry people who are actually in radio and the work that goes into it and yeah so uh the only thing because over the years i joined the the making your own music thing pretty late but what i but i'd been listening to radio my whole life and uh the one thing you notice over say the last 10 15 years is there are less and less programs or segments there were a lot 15 years ago on every station nearly every station there was something you know whether it was an interview in the morning or a chart you know there was the champo chart there was there were a lot of things going on red fm had their thing as well and uh, over the years of course because of other issues everything just kept dying down so it to people who don't know even me at some point it would look like you know there's you know people aren't just listening so uh radios don't play it anymore and that's the word that went around that even reached me that people don't listen to malaysian music and that's why uh there aren't requests for it and it doesn't get played and the people who get played again word that goes around i haven't like gone and spoken to label owners or anything but i hear this from other people as well i do, i'm not making this up in my room mm. uh that uh labels buy airtime or you know everything is favoritism if you know this if you know that are you talking about people over there mm. yeah that's yeah. that's a the, practice the, the, that's the old, yeah the old payola system yeah the yeah. payola system then Of course before this I've not even not had a conversation with a radio exec or I've spoken to radio announcers and they've mm. briefly spoken to me about uh what the process is like and I can't say that you can't get on radio because <clears throat> I've got my stuff on radio a couple of times. Yeah. So um <clears throat> what I as a musician maybe expected over the years which is now even more happening with the new plans at hits is just regular rotation for malaysian music mm. but again we didn't know that everything that goes to hits is already on the mountain and <laughs> yeah. just don't have content to play yeah i should start my stuff you know? <laughs> yeah you i got albums you know? <laughs> yeah i'll get to that later lah bye bye brand new go yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so the only thing i would expect as a new b ish in the scene is this it's like you said it's nice when you hear right after a children shape of you you hear a local artist you know mm. and you it's nice to know that you know the quality is the same and that if you can play it against something like that then your stuff can go anywhere lah you know okay um yeah. no because i've been curious probably because i've been i've been uh, yeah uh, sorry uh, probably speaking as someone who's common uh who's got their music or tried got their music or music I purchased played in three different countries the UK Ireland and now in Malaysia so I think the only thing from from the local point of view that they want from their local radio stations is just somewhere that they can play their own music I think mm. that's just it mm. they, somewhere that okay. they know of they send their music they'll send their local music and there's going to be if there's not going to be it's not going to be played on regular rotation there's going to be at least one show where they can get the music played that encourages okay. people it creates a scene it cre- it creates uh, like and it creates it that scene cre- in itself creates a scene within itself because of a yeah exactly because of the mu- local music realizes we're not we're not just singing in the wind here we can get this stuff going then that yeah. then that, that that itself gets it gets its own w- small uh world one going and then that w- we were when our snowball becomes bigger snowball becomes a bigger snowball yeah. there's so f- there's 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 something there that that they can do like no i think and i guess it's working now because like like i told you like we were not getting music before this and it's only been a, less than a week and it's you've seen the, there's a whole the bunch of yeah there's a whole bunch of yeah you yeah. know and people 
the, the, the beauty of it is now we are looking at uh, local, uh, even musicians and even just their fans, you know, taking a, a, a video and putting up on Instagram of them listening to the radio. It's like, oh my God, I'm listening to this at three o'clock in the afternoon, you know? And that, that everybody starts sharing. Like I told you, like somebody was listening literally in the mama today yeah. and we were like, we were getting all these messages and we were like, that's what we, we I guess, I guess that's the, the, the direction and getting to your question yeah. in, in terms of, what the plan is, you know, for the next one year, like, two years, three years. I think that's all local musicians want. They want to, yeah. they want, they know that that sort of thing is possible and can happen and it's mm -hmm. happening and, and therefore they're going like, okay, then we don't have to send our music off to different countries. Well, they, it's, it's all good sending music off to different countries where you can get it played. But, yeah. you can get it played on, yeah. but it's not that you country. can't do it here. You know? Yeah. 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 That, yeah. There, there yeah. is an outlet. There, like, we, there's, we know that, um, Especially for alternative music, there's probably only one outlet that we know of in Malaysia at the moment. It's probably BFM. We can all say that yeah. it's BFM. But if there's a second one, it's just going to encourage more mu musicians yeah. to, to get it, get there, especially for local. Because so many people in this industry, because there are a lot of the industry is kind of fractured between the Malay mm -hmm. scene, the Chinese scene, then the the jazz scene and the pop scene. No one, there's a lot of people who don't know each other. So we. If you got one yeah. central thing where someone's flicking over on their car, and next thing they hear a look, they just hear a good song, and they go, well, mm. it's a, "Dear God, it's a damn good song." I wonder who that. And then they find out it's a Malaysian person. They're going, "Oh God, yeah. uh, yes." You get a bit of sense. I mean, I mean, I mean, coming from me, where I've been, I've been in this scene like twenty-three years from mm -hmm. the underground scene, late nineties. I've come full circle where people are apathetic. Late nineties, early two thousands, people are proud and vlog saying, "Yeah, I don't listen to Malaysian music." Um, so where I'm coming from, I've never had expectations. Completely zero. It was, it's not that I didn't care about the stations. It's just mm. I love making music. I produce albums. I, yeah. I, I was in the underground scene. And so that, that's the thing. I think um, uh, I think expectation was that radio. But there were very few things. Back in the late 90s, there was the alternative rock show um, yeah. by Kamil Hoffman, who later on became yeah. the, the CEO. I'm not, no, he became the head of Finas. So yeah. that was a show where, you know, it was... Can you imagine in Malaysia that was late nineties. It was two hours a week on on time time highway radio, mm. and uh, me and a friend actually crashed into time highway and to catch him middle of the show. There was no security back then. <laughs> just walk up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This us, man. Yeah. yeah. So we oh, we just walked in. I was doing yeah. So Malaysia and that, but, yeah. <laughs> so, so when when I came back, maybe like, I was abroad and came back. Uh, there was there was zero expectation. Not primarily because. The, the sense that the stations didn't care it was just the kind of the norm that you mm. you don't really hear local stuff um and you know the 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 way things are now this this is prior to to you know the internet and digital phones mm. but but i did feel the the even 10 years ago when i had released my warga album 2010 when it went on bfm <clears throat> um, guys who are SMSing me, say, hey man, oh, you're on the radio. It's like, it's, 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 I think that's important. It's whether it's radio and I think any of the, the, the mass media yeah. is a form of um, sort of being, being is a, is a, is a validation. I think oh, yeah. musicians it's, it's like, want like, that. You feel accepted. You feel, yeah, you, you want to be accepted. accepted. Like even, yeah. today so with, I, even today with the internet where you can, you can just put your music out to the world and you're, you're, you're still going to hear it. And you're still you gonna, still need you. You, you need, you need validation. People. There's still validation when it's yeah, yeah, yeah. it's one of the big three yeah. of TV, yeah. radio, or film. Or press. I press, mean, I mean, yeah. one thing that's completely lost now is the our time. Last time, at least, when you get you know a review in a newspaper, and the, yeah. the norm then was star two. You know, you get a review and you get glitches, album right? review of the week, right? Yeah, and you you you're happy. You you cut that, and but now I think you know. Sadly, the space for that, I think, in, in mass mainstream media is, is diminishing. I'm glad that, that kids is turning a new leaf, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, yeah. I think that's important. Yeah. Okay. Just processing um, everything. Because I'm going to come yeah, in now. Yeah. A bunch of stuff. So, 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 so Priya, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you a lot of stuff. Look at my all this stuff. Yeah, <laughs> send yes, my please. Archive. I mean... Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, down the line, that's that's the whole beauty of it, right? Like, like we said, we were just trying to educate listeners and you need to understand our listeners uh, between the ages of 10 to 29, right? Yeah. So these are these are kids who are, you know, yeah, young demographic that, but you need to understand that these young demographic, they love their pop songs. They love yeah, the mainstream. Yeah. They love yeah. the, the bops, right? So yeah. Yeah. if you want to try and reach out to these kids, we've you got gotta... to 
you got to you know you got a box la you got a box yeah, yeah. la you know yeah. Yeah, you know yeah, i think that's important that's important that sense of i think maybe like you know in the, in the earlier eras like 20 or 30 years ago i mean when they use the term right, radio friendly that term radio mm. friendly was like okay you you do compose and you do produce stuff that is mm. for the radio you know yeah. Yeah. but now it's like guys are just doing stuff and sending in hey why radio don't play is like that sense correct is, yeah So, you know, I mean, it might work because if you if you think about it, like Billie Eilish, she doesn't care what she plays. Like, it's still a pop yeah. and it still goes on radio. It, it could be so depressing and so sad, but yeah. it's still on radio, right? Oh, so I guess a, a good I guess we're a, a bit more song. open now. Yeah, yeah a good but, song yeah, is a good song. A good song. So, like okay. everybody, know, everybody, everybody knows what a good song is. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Like a good song's always going to have pop sensibilities. Like. Just, yeah. just, they just are. Yeah. Bad. Even I mean, the, for me, the fl- I completely agree that. Yeah. Even the heaviest, I mean, if it, even the heaviest of metal songs that are like very extreme metal, like the best ones that that you go that will always be stuck in your head, like like check Enter yeah. Sandman, Metallica, heavy as hell, huge pop sensibilities all over that yeah. song, like Teen yeah, Spirit, yeah. Nirvana. But, like, but 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 that's genre, uh, But even yeah. like, even yeah. if I like, think of a song is recorded lo-fi. You know, when you think oh, about like, it, a lot of the history of the blues, like Robert Johnson, yeah, his new, yeah. his yeah, yeah, yeah. one mic, but look at the, look, through, you know? look at the early Pixie stuff that Steve Albini recorded. Like the early Pixie, yeah. Pixie stuff were yeah. really yeah. poor recordings, but like they're absolutely beautiful pop songs, absolutely fantastic. But I think, like you see, like down the line, it's it's really about people need to understand that hey, you know, radio, you're you're it's not like you're focusing so much on the lyrics you're focusing on the road that's yeah. your main goal right so you yeah, you yeah. just want something that you can <laughs> sing along to and you can yeah. you know oh this is a catchy tune you know nobody it's listens great. to the lyrics people will just shazam it or whatever and then next later go back and listen online right yeah. so it's it's one of those where it can be any song but it's something that oh yeah. it's stuck in your head and and so yeah. it needs to be that instead of a, if it's yeah. a passion project it's fine and we all have yeah. we all go through phases where do we want to make this a mainstream hit or do we want to yeah. go with our passion yeah, yeah. it can be both I, it can be I, you know something we work on can I, I think that's true because i always done stuff that, that i did and i do it and everything else is a plus and i think that that's interesting because um when you realize that your stuff goes on i think a lot of people discovered my later works like like from the post midnight on bfm like but they didn't know i there's several people like hey i finally found out that you sang this song like after a year it's like oh you see, even bfm and they, <laughs> they yeah they so don't announce they don't announce they don't announce they just yeah, play it you know, know they just but that's missing it. yeah that's missing kan you need you need the dj the role of the dj i think is yeah. diminishing that that yeah. they curate right i grew up listening yeah. to casey kasem you know mm. casey kasem <laughs> on american yeah. top 40 <laughs> But that, that that that's how old I am, you know. I ancient, but but that that's where the, I think we're kind of missing that maybe the last 10 years, and yeah. hopefully, like I think I think yeah, the, if we need we need we need a guide. I think we've already yeah. reached a point where it's so saturated, so many songs. Yeah, we, we need somebody to like, hey guys, check this out. You know? Yeah, another that, thing I want to ask. Comforting you. voice. <laughs> I want to ask you. Uh-huh. Yeah, lots, <laughs> lots and lots of questions coming. Now it's coming from a, now it's coming really? from a new fan. He's just <laughs> collecting the questions there, man. Right. Waiting. I, you know, I, I, I just yeah. want to I just want to know what Shazam is. Am I that old? I don't know. <laughs> it's a uh, it's ah. like Google for music. It's an app. You just if songs like play. Apparently like, they put the phone near the radio and it picks it up. Yeah, and then and it just it tells you what. It tells you the song oh. and then you can go and save it. Yeah. That's how you. That's how you. Right. Yeah. So, Priya, Asmal, I think Derek mm. is more ancient than you. Like, you like ancient from the poor thing. I I knew because I knew because that dude who tried to find me out said I I tried to jam and I couldn't find you. I was like, what's your jam? Is that like that cartoon? Even chop and go. Yeah, so Priya, ah, I think what 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 I guess the other concern or issue that most musicians, local musicians, want to know is. See you guys. Okay, as you had mentioned earlier, you know you guys are not getting enough uh, music. But now you have your Mad Ten already, right? And you claim that is your top ten best English music in Malaysia at that moment or whatever. Now, why is it only played on a Saturday when you know you're not going to be getting much traffic? It's over one hour. Like you know, the other songs you're talking about, your international songs, they are get they are, they are being overplayed as well. You know, you you are just rotating the same songs. But why isn't the Met Ten like maybe played on a Monday, or even on a Wednesday? You know, why isn't there that constant rotation? And the other thing I also wanted to ask is, see, you guys um are depending on people to send in their music. 
Now, I'm just, uh, I just want to know, like, what is the process? Like, is that the only way for someone to get their music played? They have to send it to the radio station? Or do you guys also do some work, like, where you guys go and listen to, let's say, Spotify that's putting out all these new playlists? You know, they are, every time a Malaysian musician releases something, it gets added onto a playlist and that gets played and all that. Do you guys pick songs from there? Okay, like, you so know, the quality is already good. Yeah, okay, so I'll answer your first question first. So in terms of the Met 10, it's based on uh, weekends, so we have a lot of listeners, by the way. So it's not a, it's not a, suddenly a huge dip and stuff like that. So everybody thinks it's a graveyard thing, it's not. Um, the other thing would be, if, I think they've tested it before. I don't know about, uh, about this, but uh, from what I know, is they've, they've tested, Met, they've moved Met 10, the timing of Met 10, uh, a few times already. So for now, it's just, this is just how it's been. Like. I mean, my, my previous bosses, I need to check with them as to why they picked uh, this timing. Like. Normally, weekends, we like to do uh, a lot more specialty shows. Um, and we've even done like a hip-hop show before. Uh, we did a Asian invasion, I think, uh, a few months ago. Um, and so weekends, it gives us a bit more time to kind of play around and, and, and stuff like that. But... The, but we used to play, uh, for the past year and a half, we've been playing uh, local music even at nights, weekdays at nights. So from 8 to 12. So 8 to 12 is a, is a younger demographic. So it's the ones that are on TikTok, the ones that are actively discovering music, yeah. international or local. So e even at night, sometimes we will get requests because we've got a, we've got a, a, a WhatsApp line uh, where people send in song requests and they do requests for local music. So that is our usual spots. Lah. Um, during the day, a lot of people like to listen to familiars because you've got a, a it's the masses, right? And they all like to listen to uh, the, 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 the top 40s. Lah. That's usually that, predominantly that, that system has always worked um, for hits. Um, yeah. Now we are, we're kind of changing it and, and breaking the, the system a bit, I guess, um, cool. by, by putting it and inserting in between. Lah. Um, and what's the second question again? I forgot. My second question is, okay, so... Oh, how to discover say, music. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so, yeah, I got yeah. it. So, um, every Friday, yeah, you're right, Spotify releases uh, uh, the new music Friday. We actually listen in the morning. So, at 7 o'clock in the morning when we get into work on Fridays, um, we listen to the entire thing. Uh, we will discover the local music. Sometimes, if they don't send to us, we still put it up. So, every Friday, we will say, hey, these are new songs that are playing on hits. And it always even features, if there's a local song, they will feature a local song. Uh, sometimes they will be shocked also because we tag them right in the post and then they'll be like, oh, I didn't know you were playing my song. So hmm. sometimes we actively do it ourselves. Um, we also follow uh, Made in Malaysia playlist on Spotify and also on Jukes and a few others. Um, and also because we we do go out, we do go to the for like open mics and stuff like that. So we, we, we go out and, and speak to people. Lah. So And then like if friends, friends send over. Sometimes we have to actively go out and look like... Because if people don't send, then we got no songs, right? So it's the same like international songs. Sometimes, not all the times labels uh, send us a, a list saying that, hey, these are the songs coming up. We go on Spotify first. And then we identify and then we will say, um, like for example, like, uh, I can't remember who. Oh, I lost my train of thought. But it was one of these local acts that we discovered a few months ago. And we couldn't find, because he had no manager. No, uh, we couldn't find his Instagram and, and stuff like that because also people need to come up with proper names. Like, I think a lot of them <laughs> have number glamour that is really hard to number one pronounce because we are so like, you know, like even for international artists, we, if you're not too sure how to pronounce the name, we go on YouTube or we go online and then we check how they pronounce their names, right? Some of these local acts have really funky names and there's no way of knowing how to pronounce their names. So it's also a struggle for us. So there's all these things that come into play. Um, but yeah, so we couldn't find this, this, this one of these uh, artists. And then we had to go and then we ended up found out it was someone's church friend. It was someone's mm. in the team, the church friend. And then we said, oh, can we, can, you, can we get a clean version of your song? Or can we get an MP3 of your song? Because we can't rip it from the internet. Then we ended up playing that song. La. So mm. yeah, that's, you, we usually kind of go around that. Well, I think that, that, that's, that gives two points to local musicians. Is number one, get your original songs in the hit, hit because they're, gonna, they're probably going to get played. And number two, join your local performance rights organization because it means royalties. Yeah. So, yep. like, yeah. Yeah. so, like, that's yeah. very, the, the, royal, the performance rights organizations for the, for the local musicians is very important. Yeah. So, like, get, get signed up to that for lo any local musicians. Listen now that you've got original music, get signed up because. 
you get your music yeah. played on the radio, you're going to get some more artists, right? Yeah, Eric, so even we uh, no, just a quick point about that because we're actually uh, getting like people from uh, MACP and PPM and all that to actually come on on air to actually kind of educate uh, musicians on yeah. on yeah. trying to figure out how to get because uh, uh, something interesting that I found out a few weeks ago was that any all the money that uh, from this local acts that are not signed or they you know don't not registered right they actually go to the labels yes yeah so it's all this money that you're just not collecting you know as, as claiming as not claiming it yeah, yeah. you're not claiming <laughs> yeah. it yeah right yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's, and that's I got a, I've been screaming at musicians here for years until from since I moved here to get signed up get signed up get signed up get signed up you will get royalties yeah. They go, no la. I go, yes la. <laughs> uh, Derek, I wanted to ask you. So, uh, the only reason why I'm asking Derek is because Derek's not from Malaysia. And I want to know, like, you know, how was radio back in Ireland? So, coming... Much the someone, same. Much, literally much the same. I went through... Do you... Did the local artists feel that way as well? We, like, you know, their music was not... We had, like, like uh, I remember I, I, used to work at, I used to work on a factory between the ages of 19 to 24 and we used to send from the, the factory we used to send faxes this is how old i am send faxes <laughs> and the, faxes and their local radio stations saying they aren't playing enough x y and z type of music or uh, local artists like and they, they would reply to us like they go, respond oh yeah yeah they, they oh. would respond to us like so like we're, there was always we, we like you the older you get you, you sort of understand like radio stations are aren't altruistic enterprises they're yeah. there to make money like yeah yeah so yeah. like we, yeah. Yeah. like they have they have to make money in the way they make money that's by playing top 40 acts but like if they're local they should be it should be an environment for local music that's what was always our argument there should be at least one of you got one show a week just one mm. show a week for an hour a week that you can play local music please we, everybody will enjoy that there so like we had to see it we, the, and luckily there's a few shows back in back home that did that so like it was, but it was always same sort of arguments it's been on for a long long time so like especially with commercial mm -hmm. radio stations like it's completely changed with the the internet and you've got digital radio stations you can they can generally do what they want within certain uh parameters but like when it came to commercial radio stations it was generally always the same issues but like it, yeah. it, it's always fighting the fight like so like yeah yeah so i guess we have to agree that you know there is a difference between a commercial radio station and you having oh, an alternative radio well, station. Do you have and to, what, yeah. If, if that's the what you're going to go up against, you have to start off with yeah. that initial yeah. ground floor, the commercial radio oh, stations there yeah, to make yeah. money. Uh, no, the problem about Malaysians is Malaysians always think the grass is always greener. They think, oh, yeah. Malaysia, yeah, fuck that, mm. Malaysia. No, <laughs> but yeah. oh, man, that's because true. they never travel out. They sit under the coconut shell. <laughs> I travel to, <laughs> to Australia and I pretty hated much, it. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> much <laughs> My God, I hate Australia. I <laughs> don't want to go back. No, if you think about it, right? Like even even the the, the you're right. You know, it's like musicians just kind of say, "Oh, here's my song." Make me famous, and I'm like, that's exactly. not my job, though, right? My our <laughs> job is to play the song, but yeah, you need yeah. to come at least with a plan, like you know, what is your marketing plan? I came from the label side of things, right? So when mm. when I tell when they tell me, hey, I've got a song out, I'm like, great. Now, what is what are you, what else are you going to be doing with yeah. this? You know, it's the same thing. Even if you put it on an online streaming platform, it's the same thing, right? You have a song. Oh, my song is on on Spotify. Great. What are you doing yeah. to promote it? Nothing, <laughs> exactly. right? Some of them Nothing. still come to me and will say like, oh. Uh, you are doing radio promo. Am I getting paid? I'm like, no, I'm promoting your song. So, like, yeah, what, homework, what is the plan, man. though? Do the yeah. homework ah, and a, come here and then let's have that conversation. And also, the yeah. other thing is, like you said, right? I mean, a lot of uh, musicians, I guess, out there don't really know, number one, who to speak to or the proper channels or, or stuff like that. And, and, and that's why we've, we've kind of been stuck yeah. in this mess where yeah. everybody's assuming a lot yeah. you know we're Correct. and it's a completely new team also you know if you think about it hits that like, i used to listen to hit 20 years ago when i was going to school <laughs> right <laughs> Lying, and now man. i never yeah. expected to be working in hits and we're trying to make that change and trying to yeah. it's a completely different team it's whatever you thought about hits last time it's not the same now and I think that's good to team, know yeah. yeah that's that's different <laughs> now. yeah now i'm wondering how difficult it is to set up an alternative radio station People like Derek, uh, Azmil, do you guys know? 
No, I mean you got you got the whole legal thing about, about radio waves and all that stuff, and yeah, of yeah, course the the digital yeah, so. online online is a wee bit different, but like back yeah. in the day, there was like uh, of course the, there was like Radio Carolina back in the UK back back in the day, what, which was sort of legal radio stations. What they did was there was they run a radio station from a ship yeah. off the coast. Ah, the yeah. So they were just outside UK waters and kind of European international waters, but the radio station was promoting to uh the rest of the uk so like hold on wait i think uh, i've watched a movie man about it yeah, yeah there's yeah, a movie yeah. that yeah <laughs> right. rock it's, the boat uh, or something yeah that's true it's real it's like, based like, on i mean that that film was a combination but but what derek's saying that's, that's, that's how what they did, did it. like yeah. that's what it is. but it would, like it would cost you a fortune to get did you have to pay for the actual your yeah. frequency bar mm. like so like it would cost a fortune for that but I mean, I think it's mean, just regulated, lah. So it's yeah. a bit tough, lah. Correct. Yeah, I mean, that's, what, that's what I'm wondering yeah. also. Yeah. yeah, you know. I think, I think Unless you just SoundCloud that thing, lah. I think oh, it's a good podcast, lah. You know. Podcast, lah. Uh, yeah, now podcast, lah. That's the yeah. Is it? Po- do you think it's possible to do a show and then just put it up on Spotify while playing music on it? But there's copyright live. issues, right? Yeah, we're always yeah. Copyright, copyright issues. issues? You can't. Yeah. yeah, you've got copyright, especially when you're playing a uh, major label. You're going to have copyright issues. Like, no, no, no. As in, like, if we start like a Malaysian thing, yeah, and we of course get permission from them. Especially if they're independent, it'd be a lot easier. And I'm you're, just stu- you're if still it's... going to have copyright issues. Look, look at Facebook. Yes, yeah, you Facebook. still will because Facebook. if you're putting up on like Facebook and all that, they will remove it because there's oh, audio they're, they're, there, regardless of whether you got yeah, permission. Their are algorithms. Oh. Like, look what look what's happened. They like volatile, like and Jimmy and all like. Like a, yeah, yeah, a friends yeah. band that try to put up their own music on Facebook. A Facebook <laughs> took it down. On <laughs> they took it down. It was their own Nila, music. Man. The, the moment they start playing, it goes off, man. You know, you yeah. violated their terms of service and stuff. Yeah, so like, uh, uh, we're we're dealing with Terminator now, man. They're, they're checking <laughs> off. <song, man>. Sky, <laughs> Skynet went live a long time ago, guys. Skynet went live a long. Time ago. Yes, exactly. <laughs> no, because I'm just wondering if we if, if if not for all this, right? Can you imagine like? You know, in Malaysia, we've got, we, you know, our community is so, um, I mean, it's like just segregated. And then you could think like the punk scene, can you imagine if they were to have their own radio station, you know, and then they're playing all their oh, songs and they're also playing that, music, like. right? <laughs> oh my God, yeah. imagine that. No, but, 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 but running a station is a different thing, lah, you know, you, yeah. you need the infrastructure, all that. So, so it's not just about getting on air and mm. thinking things. Things will just happen. Mm. And, and mm. America, it's hard work. It's hard work. You need, in America, you need you've got, in America, you've got America. You got kind of college radio was the kind of bastion of yeah. Of that. I think college radio. That, yeah. that that's yeah, where yeah. 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 our colleges. Yeah. Sadly, I'm a university lecturer, but and all that stuff. But yeah. our colleges and universities are really lame, and you know they they they're so like each of them there's bureaucracies. So yeah, exactly, but, college radio was very important. That's how the like, alternative music the, happened that, in the 80s America. In, in America, yeah. the, the, the post-punk scene and the, the alternative yeah. scene grew out of college radio. Like so, like something like that yeah. can, can yeah. be can be grassroots for, yes. for music that yeah. that isn't going to get on yeah. mainstream. Yeah, and, and uh, to make it simple, it's it's always about the young people versus older. So when you got college radio, yeah. So you go like screw this, the radio. Like this is ours. Yeah, yeah. screw the old man. What do you know? Suits. And you know, that, that, I think. Yeah. That, Identity becomes very clear. So, yeah. so, so that's the thing. It's missing here. The, the, really get very passionate about it. I think that's a good. That's a good uh, spot to end the show tonight. We'll end it on an awesome <laughs> college video. So, uh, <laughs> like, like, video. I think, like, like to thank Priya for illuminating us on some very, 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 very yeah. good points. Thanks, 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 guys. Thank you, Priya, for joining us on uh, uh, episode number six of the Weight Room. As usual, I'm your host, uh, Derek Bush, with Asmal Yunar, uh, Brendan the Cruz. Yeah. And uh, Mark Peter. Are we doing say, Priya's like last words ah, for oh, Pri- our... I, <laughs> I, 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 no, 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 not last yeah, words. Uh, your no, message. No, no, quite Sorry, correct. you touch you. Your spiel. Your spiel. Your message for... Priya, we usually give the last minute to our, our guests who what, what you're planning for the future. So Priya, your last minute is yours. Go ahead, right ahead. It can I be a reminder also. Uh, <laughs> reminder. I got a reminder timer. No, I just, I just hope... <laughs> I just hope, you know, Malaysian, uh, I hope people give us a chance. I think, I hope uh, the scene, I hope this is a starting platform for us to revive uh, some sort of passion in musicians uh, for people to kind of send in their music. Look, we even started something called uh, uh, 
make a hit where if you don't even have the money to do it or you have a you have a demo and a really raw one you send it over to us and if we like it we'll pitch we'll hook you up with the labels or if not we will even produce it for you um because we just want to start creating new talent and then building that new talent i mean there was a lot of people even uh 15 20 years ago when we used to hear malaysian music on on radio and these people got that chance so now we want to give people that chance again um i think we are also always open if anybody wants to talk to us come and speak to us um i'm always i'm around uh you can send me an email or even can even just find me lah like my number is actually everywhere um <laughs> <laughs> online i don't even know how but i'll get messages at random times which is fine because at the end of the day i don't want everybody to per- per- uh, perceive something about radio when you can actually just kind of ask me Yeah. and ask the team and yeah just give us a chance lah radio is not dead radio is still got a value yeah um, believe in that yeah damn right yeah and i guess we just got to help each other right kita jaga kita right so mm. now if musicians meet us halfway and then we help you guys out and then together we just yeah. just make a hit lah this so, is just more dialogue man okay yeah well, more dialogue yeah that's that, that is great thank you very much priya uh, so we will end our episode number thanks priya thank you very well, much yeah Cool. Thanks guys. We will see you next time, guys. Bye. <laughs>